Good afternoon. My name is David DeVillers. I'm the United States Attorney for the Southern District of Ohio. I'm joined by Chris Hoffman, who is a special agent charge with the FBI for the Southern District of Ohio. Um, what we'd like to do is I'm going to make a brief statement, and, uh, and then uh, Mr. Hoffman is going to make a statement, and then we'll come back and, and take some questions. Uh, first, I want to give my disclaimer that you've heard probably a number of times is that these are, this is an indictment, that is, they're allegations. Um, these defendants are presumed innocent, and they're, they're not to be considered guilty if and until we prove them guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. So everything we say in this press conference is merely allegations at this point. We're here to announce charges against Jeff Pastor, city councilman for Cincinnati, as well as an associate of his, Tyron Marshall. Uh, these uh, uh, charges stem from a 10-count indictment that involve bribery, extortion, money laundering, wire fraud, and theft of honest services. The, the gist of this conspiracy took take place from August of 2018 through February of 2019. It involves multiple occasions of bribes, $55,000 in bribes to both of these defendants, um, 45000 of which were in cash payments between ten and fifteen thousand uh, dollars. The, the, the bribes were in turn for votes and influence over the city council on two developments and you'll see in the indictment we named two, uh, two of the uh, developments. It involved an undercover FBI, uh, FBI agent as well as two confidential witnesses. One of those confidential witnesses is Mr. Ndukwe. Um, he is going to make a statement, I believe, uh, send a statement out to the media here uh, pretty soon. Uh, Mr. Duque was vital and important in, uh, to this investigation, and, and we thank him for everything that, that he's done. Um, it wasn't just cash and, and uh, uh, money that went in, into this, uh, to this, this bribe. They're also solicited for uh, salaries from these two individuals and these two uh, uh, developments. There was a talk of investment. Um, these were uh, solicited by Mr. Pastor and Mr. Mr. Marshall. The money laundering stems from a non-for-profit that Mr. Marshall set up where a, a cashier's check went to this non-for-profit and then the cash was cashed out later and provided to, to Mr. Pastor. That's where the money laundering comes from. Now you'll see in the indictment there are many quotes. I believe Mr. Pastor um, described it as a uh, sanitizing the money going to, uh, to, to him. This indictment is indicative of, of a culture of corruption that we have and we need to address. A culture of extortion, uh, an extor a, 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 a culture of pay to play. And people like Mr. Nduque and others have been, been victims ex of extortion. Uh, it's expected and it has to end. And uh, I, as you're aware that we've had a lot of corruption here in the Southern District of Ohio in the past year, uh, and, and this is indicative of, of this just concept. Well, we, we want to flip that script. I mean, and, and one of the reasons we're here today is to flip that script. We want to turn this from a culture of corruption to a culture of whistleblowers, to a culture of individuals who will come forward and talk with us and let us know what is happening. It doesn't matter if you are as an official, if you're a government official, if you're an elected official, and you promise to do something in your official capacity for money, whether it's going to your pocket or whether it's going into your campaign, is a federal crime. It has been a federal crime, and it will remain a federal crime, and we will prosecute that federal crime here in the Southern District of Ohio. I want to thank the FBI. I want to thank Special Chair Hoffman. I want to thank uh, Emily Gladfelter and Matt Singer, who are the AUSAs that were, were in charge of this case. Uh, we still have uh, a way to go, still have some prosecutions to do. And, and I want to, I, I called Mr. Nduque yesterday and, and, and personally thanked him, and I want to publicly thank him for, for doing what he did, because we can't do these cases without people like Mr. Nduque. And with that, I'll hand it over to Mr. Hoffman.
Thank you, David. So my name is Chris Hoffman. I am the special agent in charge of the Cincinnati Field Office for the Southern District of Ohio, as Mr. DeViller said, at C-H-R-I-S-H-O-F-F-M-A-N. It was just a few months ago, I was up in Columbus with Mr. DeVillers, and we announced the public corruption charges for Mr. Householder. And I said then, from city council to the state house, public corruption is unacceptable. I meant it then and I mean it now. Those words hold very true today. Public corruption is the top criminal priority for the FBI. As I said before, it undermines the public trust and it undermines the public's confidence and the strength of our democracy. The people of Cincinnati deserve better. Businesses who want to come to Cincinnati want to know they're getting a fair deal. They don't want to pay to play. When a city council member attempts to line his pockets in exchange for favors or votes in City Hall, it is a disservice to the citizens of Cincinnati. The indictment unsealed today, as mentioned, accuses Councilman Pastor and his business associate, Tyron Marshall, for attempting to extort, extort developers, for asking for and accepting bribes while Pastor was a member of council. Matter of fact, I was talking to my uh, supervisor in charge of a public corruption squad down here, and he reminded me, I think it was six months into Pastor's service as a councilman when he sought his first bribe. Six months. As mentioned in the indictment, Pastor and Marshall were aggressive and cavalier in their request for money. They wanted developers to pay them thousands of dollars in order to deliver votes to City Hall. Pastor went as far as to ask, quote, for a base salary, end quote, of $115,000 per year for himself and another $85,000 for his friend Tyron Marshall. Later, Pastor stated that $200,000 was what he called a median income for the things he was doing. While Pastor was being paid by the taxpayers to represent the city of Cincinnati, he was secretly soliciting bribes from developers. He promoted his own interest above those of the citizens of Cincinnati. As Mr. DeVillers mentioned, this case is a, an incredible example of how uh, tips and the help from the public play a critical role in our investigations. Reverend Graham, I think, said when one man's shows moral courage, other spines are stiffened, right? Mr. Nduque showed moral courage by coming forward and helping us with this case, and I'm hoping that others will draw on his courage and will refer these types of cases to the FBI so that we can investigate them with the U.S. Attorney's Office. I'd like to end today with a little challenge. We're talking about flipping the script. I want to challenge public officials, public servants. This is the Marine Corps birthday, and it is the eve of Veterans Day. We're going to honor Marines and veterans for these two days for sacrifice, for selflessness. All right? I want to challenge our politicians and public servants to have a veteran's heart, have a Marine's heart. I want them to live a life of service, not disservice. I want our public officials to live a life of selflessness, not selfishness. I want them to be about humility and not hubris. On March 11th of 2007, in his fourth tour of duty, a Marine named Major Douglas Zimbiak was killed in action. Among his things, he had a journal called Principles My Father Taught Me. I think we can all learn from what was recorded in that journal. And I want our politicians and public servants to take heed of these words written down in Major Zimbiak's journal. Be a man of principle. Fight for what you believe in. Keep your word. Live with integrity. Be brave. Be bigger than yourself. Serve your country. Teach, mentor, 
Give something back to society. Lead from the front, conquer your fears, be a good friend, be humble, but be confident. Appreciate your friends and family, be a leader, not a follower. Be valorous on the field of battle and take responsibility for your actions. Let's flip, flip the script. The culture of political corruption in the states of Ohio and as evidenced by this indictment are unacceptable. I want to thank you for being here and we'll now answer some of your questions. At what point did the witness come forward? Uh, repeat your question, I'm sorry. Mr. Ikuque? Yes. Which cooperating witness number is he and his convention place one of the developments involved here? Um, do you know what, in the indictment which one it is? CW1. CW1. Cooperating witness one. And the developments involved? Uh, I don't have them in front of me. They're not, they're not in the indictment, so we're not going to have to vote yeah. on them. But it, uh, it's you know, developed a political long for just their individual. On the culture of corruption question, Mr. Ikuque, I believe we're going to stick to the four corners of the indictment, but I'm, I'm not sure if you want to answer that, David. Yeah, so um, we'll let Mr. Ndukwe answer a lot of, out of those questions, but I think Mr. Ndukwe and a lot of people, a lot of developers, a lot of people like him were just sick and tired of being uh, this, this involved in this kosher, this expectation of, of pay to play. It's almost like this entitlement from, uh, I mean, at least two of our city councilmen this year and, and I think overall in, in Ohio, we've got corruption cases in Dayton, we've got, of course, the State House, and it's, it's in, incredible and shocking and amazing to me how this sort of entitlement seems to come from a lot of politicians. Not all politicians, but a lot of them. Does, does your investigation continue on that question? Are there other city hall you're looking into? So we don't talk about pending investigations. This particular indictment, these, this set of charges, is, is, is done. As far as Mr. Pastor and, and uh, Mr. Murray's concern, we're, we're done. Mr. Um, Marshall's concern that th this is the stem. We're not looking at other individuals involved in this particular scheme, if you will. Did the witness come forward right away, or was it after several times that Pastor reached out for payment? We approached the, the witness, Mr. Ndeku, had nothing, and Duque had nothing to do really with Mr. Pastor. Because of his position in the community, as a developer, we, that is the United States government, the FBI, and the USA, went to him, and he agreed to help. Why did you choose him? Why approach him? Um, I'll let Mr. Ndukwe talk about that, but mostly because of his position in the, in the community. We, we knew through information, through sources, through historical sources, that this was the gig, you know, this was the shtick. And he was in a position to, to be able to, to, to be extorted, quite frankly. Any, any, uh, any, any evidence of connection to the previous case involving city council with this one? No. Is that environment a city hall in Cincinnati right for bribery, extortion, and corruption? The fact that we had two in, I don't know how many, in, in one year, you know, that, that, that tells you all, all you need to know. I mean, and uh, th that's a shocking part, that they were. It, it's almost more disturbing that they had nothing to do with each other, right, because of this culture that we're talking about. And we hope people take heed of it. Mr. Hoffman, you said this was aggressive within six months in office. So I had a conversation with, um, again, with the, my public corruption supervisor today uh, around lunchtime, and I said, do you think that, that folks seek public office because they're greedy, they want to use their public office, or is it the office, is it the power that turns them that way? I think if someone's seeking a bribe within six months, they probably entered office with the intention. I, I, I'm only you know, guessing here, but I think um, you know, unfortunately, and that's what we're talking about with Mr. Villers flipping the script, we need people to seek office who have integrity and want to serve, not who want to be served. And I think uh, if you're seeking a, a bribery within six months of taking office, uh, you probably had a path uh, that you were going down uh, when you took office. Mr. Denard, the, the, the development in question went through. Did these two developments go through? Did they clear the council? I think the answer is yes and no. I think uh, development one, uh, to some 
in some capacity did, and Development 2 did not. And in fact, we, that is us and the FBI, disengaged at one point because we were um, trying to save taxpayers money and, and, and bribes. What should happen to those votes then? I apologize? What should happen to those votes then? Do they become null and void? Uh, that's, that is not up to me. I think that uh, often in corruption cases and even play to pay, the, the, the result is actually good for the people but the politicians take absolute advantage of it and solicit bribes. And sometimes, you know, it's not. But so they were two real projects? Uh, those were two real projects, yes. So at City Hall, pastors and our, they're not known as particularly powerful members of the council. Um, would, would you say they were delusional about their ability to influence other people's votes? I mean, did that actually happen? Were they influencing people's votes? I don't know. I, I, what, what we do know is that is what the offer was. That was the quid pro quo. They would do this and, or attempt to do it and return for this money that they accept. Are you going to go back to something that Nathan asked? When he's talking about previous investigations, he did see in the Gang of Five special prosecutor investigation. It did say this investigation is ongoing. Does that cross over into any of this? We're, we're always investigating corruption. I mean, we're just constantly doing it. But as far as this particular event goes, this, this scheme, it, it's done. Citizens at home watching this see a second city council person dealing with a, a federal indictment. Based on your experience investigating public corruption, are we closer to the entire iceberg of corruption in Cincinnati or closer to the tip? An iceberg has sunk the Titanic, so I'm, I'm not going to get uh, into the that as much as say we, we absolutely I think we're in absolute agreement. There is a culture of corruption. Not just in Cincinnati, quite frankly. We think in, in Ohio, in, in the Northern District, got a number of city councilmen out of Toledo. I mean, it, it's just, uh, it's, it's surprising, it's shocking, and, and anything we can do to change that culture is what we, we want to do. Yeah, and, I, and I'll say, I, I have two public corruption squads uh, dedicated to investigating public corruption, one sits here in Cincinnati and one in Columbus, and, and a public corruption task force. It is the highest criminal priority in the FBI. And the reason for those, uh, for those priorities and for those personnel being assigned is, unfortunately, we don't think it's, it's the end. So we're, we're constantly, as Mr. DeVilla said, investigating allegations of public corruption. And um, I mean, nothing I think would make me happier and, and the citizens of Ohio if they could absolutely trust that uh, a public corruption investigation would never take place again. But uh, I just don't think that's, that's reality. But we do want to flip the script. Um, I don't know at this point, so we'll, we'll see. I'm, I'm going to, I work at the pleasure of the president, whether it's this president or the next president, and we'll, we'll, see what, we'll see what happens. Is there any added urgency? It's public corruption, so there's always urgency. I mean, we, we're, we're prosecuting individuals, young men, young women, for crimes that are committed, and how can we, with credibility, say you need to follow these law when our own lawmakers, our own leaders aren't doing it? So everything begins and ends with rule of law, and, and, we're, and that's why it's number one with the FBI, because we need credibility to ask people to follow the laws that these corrupt officials are passing and enforcing. But you won't say whether or not this is the first part of the multi-state investigation into other city council members or anything like that? I won't. Undercover. Yes, that's an undercover FBI agent, yes. How long did this investigation take? Well, I mean, it started really in, in, in earnest in, in the summer of 2018 and through. Uh, I think one of the questions are why, why do we wait too long to, to charge it? And, and, and we'll, I'm not going to get into a lot of details, but a lot of it's because of undercover informants and undercover FBI agents and being utilized in other uh, investigations. How long was that I'm not going to get into that. You want to get into yeah. that? So uh, public corruption investigations are incredibly difficult. Um, really, without being able to demonstrate that the politician's hand is in the cookie jar, uh, it's, it's hard to get a conviction. And they generally are not going to plead guilty or cooperate uh, if they believe you do not have their hand in the cookie jar. One of the techniques that we use that's very successful are using undercovers and confidential informants. 
but the the process to become a certified undercover agent in the FBI is extremely difficult, time consuming, expensive, and they're not a dime a dozen. They're very special. They're very special assets to the Bureau and to the American people. And so sometimes they're being used at different places in the country. And so we can't bring some, a charge forth as quickly as we'd like to because of ongoing investigations, maybe outside of this, where that undercover is involved. But uh, most of our undercovers, once they're certified, uh, unless their identity is, is uh, compromised irreparably, uh, they will serve in that capacity for a long time. So I'm not going to go into all the techniques that we use for, for undercover operations and, and uh, the, the, the bona fides and things that we would use, but certainly they're playing a role uh, in an undercover capacity. Uh, it makes it sometimes easier that they don't live here, but uh, I'm not going to go into all of the details of, of that, but sometimes it's easier for undercovers to travel to a location and conduct uh, the undercover operation. In his home. Were they in court already? And if so, was there a plea entered? Can you give us any details on that? I apologize, I didn't hear that either. Uh, they've been in court, correct? Both suspects? Yes. They, they, elaborate on what happened this afternoon? They had their initial appearance only. Um, there's, they haven't had their arraignment yet. In the arraignment, they'll enter a guilty or not guilty charge, presumably at this point a not guilty. But they were informed of their charges. Um, they'll have a counsel appointed, and, and uh, they're not detained. Um, and then we, we go from there to the arraignment. And their arrest, it was FBI agents alone? Or was, was FBI, FBI agents alone, quite correct. Yeah, so um, to Mr. Pastor was arrested by an FBI squad, uh, not a tactical squad, but he was arrested at his home. Um, Mr. Marshall was not at his residence, uh, and, but he was contacted and later turned himself in um, and, and cooperated with, with that process. Given the corruption around the state, is there a common thread? Is there a, what is the undercurrent um, that may be connecting or feeding this? Well, it's, it's, uh, it spans all parties. Uh, the undercurrent is greed and avarice and a, a desire to, to be self-serving and, and not live a life of service. That, that's, that the only common denominator is greed. And there's, it, it spans all parties. It, it spans uh, city councils, it's, uh, state government up, up in Columbus, um, uh, public officials who, who, who work at the highway department. There's, there's any level of, of public servant can, can be compromised and, and be subject to public corruption. So the, but the undercurrent is almost always greed. We hope that, um, that, that, yeah, it does. And, and uh, I think more so not just from politicians, but, uh, and there are good politicians, there are good public servants in, in the state of Ohio. But, but more so, in particular this case, um, we're talking about individuals in the private sector that you know, have to feel extorted to feel like every time, how, would you like to be a developer right now, looking, listening to this, and the only way you get what you need to, to open your business is by greasing you know, some politicians um, wallet. That's that, that's that's. We want those people to come as well. But we 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 will likely get some calls. We hope we do. And, and then he'll be very busy. And I hope he's very busy. Was there more than one undercover agent? Probably. Yeah. I, I think we may have used uh, two different uh, undercovers occasionally. They'll they'll they may because of a meeting we use pairs. Sometimes it's a single meeting. It just depends on the situation and uh, and what what. Uh, what that operation is calling for. Um, sometimes we have what's called cameo appearances of undercovers, um, and that, some of that's to, it's just to establish the bona fides of the undercover in principle. But uh, again, those are kind of just uh, kind of gets into the technique, so I don't want to discuss uh, that too much. And for the first question, though, we do get calls, and that's what we're hoping for: that when people hear this, that they are going to call. Can you imagine? I mean, where, where does Cincinnati want to be 
on the map? Do they want to be known as that city where you can't get a fair deal? You know, if you want, we want people to come here to, uh, to, to start businesses, to develop, and to, and to make Cincinnati the best place uh, to live. And if you're a developer and you're afraid you can't get a fair shake, um, but maybe you're going to go somewhere else. So it's, it's definitely uh, of importance for the, the citizens of Cincinnati and, and the whole state of Ohio that we have honest brokers. Thank you guys so much for being here.